Hello everybody, I'm Loaf Dog and welcome back to Trails in the Sky. We finally made it, we're in Gransel Castle. We're big shots now, huh? Ooh, Mayor Maybell. Mayor Maybell? And Lila, or Lila, I never know. <laughs> Joshua, Estelle! Ah, here at last. I kept wondering when you'd get here. I was practically counting the seconds. So you were invited here too, Mayor? H hey wait. You were waiting for us? How did you know we were coming? I heard from Mayor Klaus. I heard about a pair of children who entered the tournament, won its championship, and were invited to a grand royal banquet in the castle. If I'd known, I would have cancelled my appointments and come to cheer you on. Begging your pardon, ma'am. But that would have been quite impossible, given the circumstances. Yes, yes, I'm aware. I'm trying to be polite. <laughs> Don't worry, I know how busy you must be. Well, I am busy, but I wouldn't describe myself as a busy bee. I'm sure the Queen has no time to waste at the banquet. What with everything else going on? What is Duke Dunan thinking? The Captain was so stubborn about inviting me too. I had no real choice but to accept. Do you mean Captain Amalthea? Yes, that's her. Her words were polite enough, but she gave me an evil eye while she spoke them. I dared not refuse her request. I haven't heard from General Morgan in quite some time. Wait, does that mean... You haven't heard any word from the Hocken Gate? The General is unavailable, it's the longest message I've been able to wring from them. It would seem he's busy with these anti-terrorist countermeasures, or what have you. I had hoped he'd be in attendance at this banquet, though. But I guess he couldn't pull himself away. Hmm... What do you think about all of this, Mayor? Putting mayors from every city in the same place, at a time like this... Well... If the Queen were to be in attendance, I would expect some announcement of no small importance. But as it is, uh, this feels like the Duke has too much time on his greasy, chubby hands. He's letting this position of royal proxy go to his head. That sounds about right. But there might still be some kind of official announcement, don't you think? Well, whatever may come of the night, the Grand Chef here is the best in all the kingdom. I plan to enjoy every dinner. Oh, <laughs> I plan to enjoy the dinner, pay my respects to Her Majesty, and return to Bo's post-haste. Hmm. Fair enough. What about you, Lila? My mistress has been looking forward to seeing you again. Please come visit her in Bose again sometime soon. Okay. You should take a chill pill, Lila. It's probably Lila, isn't it? Uh, but I like Lila more. Uh, Mayor Klaus, right? Ah, Joshua Estelle, you made it. It's been quite a while. <laughs> I only have one old man voice. Dean Collins? You were invited to the banquet as well, sir? I just arrived today via airship from Ruin. A little Mayor Alberti told me you two won the tournament. Jill and everyone else will be so happy to hear it. <laughs> thank you. I had no idea we'd be seeing you here, Dean Collins. Dean Collins is a member of the Royal Assembly, and a man of great respect in Liberal. It's only fitting he'd be given a seat in, at this banquet. A man of great respect, he says. You flatter me, Mayor. What's the Royal Assembly? Well, you know, once all the royals get together in a room, they shout, Royals, assemble! And they all come together. It's kind of like the Power Rangers, if you've seen like a Megazord, yeah, they, they, they just melt into one giant royal person. <laughs> it's a meeting held once per year to address matters affecting the kingdom, I meant, of course. The Queen, mayors of every city, and other representatives all come together to try solving various problems of state, without achieving that. Isn't that nice? Wow, sounds big. So, all of those guys have been invited here tonight too? No, I'd say only about a half. Her Majesty is still ill and General Morgan is away on official military business. 
And Mayor Dalmor of Ruan was arrested in a nasty affair. Yes, yes, we know. And Professor Russell. He is a bit too entrenched in too many unknowns right now. We don't know how true all this talk is of the Royal Guardsmen being involved in some underground terrorist organization. It's hardly the time to be holding a feast at all, if you ask me. Hmm. Well, we can use this chance to see where Duke Noonan stands on all of these issues. We need his permission to have an audience with Her Majesty regardless. Yes, that's the biggest issue here, without a doubt. Barring us from seeing Her Majesty is the height of idiocy and mismanagement. I would like to pay my respects to Princess Claudia as well, but it's the same story. Princess Claudia's the Queen's granddaughter, right? Does she live here in the castle? No, it's my understanding her actual residence is elsewhere. But I'm told she's come to the capital as of a few days ago. She's here then? I'd really love to meet her. I'm sure you'll have a chance. <laughs> yes, Nikki Dean. I know she's Chloe. Claudia has to be Chloe. 100%. Still, thank you for the little chat. Now I think... Oh, no, okay, it's an empty room. I thought another one of the mayors would be here. Because, uh, like, let me look at the map. Roland, Bose, Ruan, Zeiss. Oh, well... Yeah, Zeiss didn't have a mayor per se. There was just the chief of operations or whatever he was called. Is he not here? Oh, before we go... <laughs> Let's see what Zin is doing. My man. I'm so hungry. Usually by this time I'm already in some bar stuffing my face. Isn't our food ready yet? I'm literally salivating thinking about this full course dinner. I mean, I'm sure we'll get called whenever the meal is ready, man. Chill. That is not the point of why we're here. Well, not that he's actually in on the plan. Yeah, I guess. Libra. <laughs> Which is kind of fun. <laughs> it's kind of funny, because um, book in Italian is Libro. What are those people at the intelligence division up to? Ta taking important documents without official permission? Mm, yeah, that doesn't sound suspicious at all. And we should totally not inform the Queen or any other powerful authority. Let's see who the other guests are. Ah, he is here. Factory Chief Murdoch was his name. Estelle, Joshua. Mr. Murdoch, I thought you might be here. With mayoral class individuals on the guest list, we had a feeling you might also be in attendance. I must say, I never expected you two to win a tournament championship and end up hobnobbing in Grensel Castle. Cassius's kids to the bone, you are. <laughs> it took more than our upbringing to get here. Lots of people helped along the way. So, it's been a few days. Have there been any developments? Well, right after you left for the capital, Captain Amalthea from the Intelligence Division came knocking. She forced me to come to this banquet, but I kept my mouth shut about Lyston Fortress. Professor Russell and company are still on the run too. Army hasn't found them yet. But the longer we keep this up, the less chance they have. It's really only a matter of time. Mm. I asked Captain Amalthea if I could see Her Majesty and wish her well, but no luck. I was flat out refused. So, in other words, we definitely aren't going to be able to do this the easy way. We sure aren't, but don't you worry, because we've totally got that covered. We will get the professor's message to Her Majesty, one way or another. I'm gonna find ya, I'm gonna get ya, get ya, get ya, get ya, one way or the other. Alright, another empty room, unless... No, I cannot read the note. Come on, somebody, anybody. Really? Like the whole West Wing, no, East Wing, 
It's just for <laughs> frigging Chief uh, Murdoch. Ooh, the bar. This is a place to talk. Please come right in. For drinks, we have anything you can think of, be it alcoholic or non-alcoholic. Well, then what do you say you serve us some of your finest... I don't know, wine. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know what these dudes like. Although, yeah, they said they do not drink yet. Ooh, the terrace. Okay. They don't actually mean to go here. Because, uh, yeah, I don't want to uh, progress the, the plot just yet. Oh, wow, check that out. This must be the castle's garden terrace. I'd say so. You can see the whole lake from here, and it overlooks the town, too. Must be great for reconnaissance. And maybe it's just a tiny bit romantic, you doofus. Eh, as nice as this is, we really don't have time to stop and enjoy it. You've got a job to do. Wow, Estelle being the level-headed one. Well, <laughs> both are being level-headed. <laughs> okay. I think the throne room was one of the ones we couldn't get into, but I'm gonna try anyway. Because, uh, fuck the police. <laughs> okay, no. Uh, so it was the treasury, and then what? The, um, the armory? And there was another room, I don't remember which one. Oh, yeah. Obviously, the, the one the queen is in. This is the intelligence division's office. Authorized personnel only. Keep your distance unless you're keen on getting arrested. Ah, oh, shucks. I mean, couldn't you distract them and I'll try getting in, Joshua? Uh -huh. With so few people, we can't possibly finish all this work. All the other officials were sent away on vacation by the Duke and forcibly removed from the castle. This is the administrative room. This is where most of the actual ruling of Liberal takes place. With Her Majesty ill, we are taking orders from... <sighs> the Duke. Man, like, nobody loves him. Which is fair, but it's not like... Well, nobody loves him. Stop, like, that's it. No, nobody loves him and everybody hates him. Openly, like, in public. Which is a little... Um, jarring. May I help you? I'm sorry to be rude, but I'm very busy right now preparing for the banquet. <laughs> Sorella. <laughs> uh, another funny name. It means sister in Italian. This is just between you and me, but... He has enough servants, but he keeps trying to convince Mistress Hilda to hire on more. To no good end uh, either, I'm sure. Primrose. I just passed Duke Dunan in the hall a moment ago. I hate how he just stares at people menacingly. <laughs> Is that a Jojo reference? It's so rude. I mean, it's all like gotta be taken into context. If it's a Jojo reference, it's not rude, it's cool. Hey, my man. The head chef is a real pro, specializing in imperial cuisine. Over 1,000 dishes of it, in fact. He's simply amazing. Uh-huh. Is this the one you're referring to? Probably, yeah. Head cook Gervais. The main course is complete. Once dinner is ready, we'll make sure everyone knows. And until then, your patience is greatly appreciated. All right, all right. Oh, wait. Did I... No, I came in from the other side. All right. Can I take a bunch of loaves? Let's go to the basement. Well, the wine cellar, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa, like... This place is... Enormous. Ah. Huh. The entrance is firmly sealed. The entrance to what place, I wonder? Huh. Okay. Nothing too interesting. Ooh. This is a restricted area. Suspicious individuals can and will be arrested on the spot, so watch yourselves. Jeez. Chill, man. Like you won't get you wanna 
drink some wine, you want to eat some apples or something else, I don't know, I'll, I can bring you some chicken down, you can drink with it, and you know, if you just happen to fall asleep, well then, that's just, you know, for the better, you need to be well rested for this type of job, don't you? Oh, Shia. Uh, oh, is everything all right? Has something happened? No, not at all. I just wanted to look around a bit. I see. It will be a bit longer yet before dinner is ready. In the meantime, please, feel free to look around to your heart's content. Oh, really? <laughs> Even in the <laughs> private rooms and, uh, like, that, that was a changing room. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I guess that this is it. There's nothing left for us to uh, peruse. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you can use that verb with the intention of looking at rooms. You can only use that when you're reading, I think, but I don't care. <laughs> Who's going to stop me? Still, let's go to the terrace. And why did I come to the library if I wanted to do that? I don't know. The loaf works in mysterious ways. Alright. Come, Joshua boy. Nope. Oh, I can turn the camera. Uh, like, I understand in the interiors, but like, not even here. Oh, man. It would have been just to get a little bit more perspective, because it's not zoomed out far enough. Like, you see, we almost can't even see the lake from here. Ah, well, either way. Alright. Yeah, I gotta say, like, it's a lovely place, for sure. But yeah, that doesn't seem... there doesn't... oh, yeah. I was gonna say, there doesn't seem to be anything for us to find unless we go to uh, where the, the queens... Uh, I don't want to say being held captive, but I kind of think that is the case. Oh, this must be the royal keep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, who are you? Hey, you two. Um, we're here as guests of the Duke. Is this where Her Majesty lives? Of course it is. Uh, I shouldn't have told you that. No, it isn't. But for the last few days, she hasn't been feeling so well. She's not seeing anyone right now. Oh, you've got it all wrong. We weren't even thinking of that. I just thought it would be amazing if she were to even take notice of us. Does Princess Claudia sleep here as well? Asking for a friend, of course. No, it's just... Hey, the princess is focused on looking after her majesty. Neither of them has time to deal with the likes of you. Might I inquire as to what's going on here? Oh, we healed up probably, right? Madam, we didn't know you were back already. The dinner party will be starting soon, so I will be returning to the maid quarters. And who are our guests? They're from the team that won the martial arts competition. It's only because of that victory that someone of a bracer's social standing would ever be invited here. Dude, I would advise you to chill, okay? Because uh, <laughs> this bow staff isn't made for, like, isn't a walking staff, alright? It's not an aid to help me walk around. It serves another purpose, and I'm very willing and open, like, to show it to you. So... You probably should just cool down. A bracer social standing? <laughs> that cracked my voice so bad. Such discourtesy! You would insult those who were personally invited to the royal castle? Uh, no, that that's not what... Those invited by the Duke should be treated with all the respect due to those invited by Her Majesty. I sincerely hope you have not forgotten that. Understood. Wow, she's intense. I wonder who she is. 
but, but madam, we can't just allow them to pass. Surely you understand the reasons that the colonel laid out. Yes. And I'm quite tired of hearing them repeated to me. I am terribly sorry, sir and madam. Security has been heightened, and as such, the royal keep and its surroundings are off limits. If I may ask, would you mind waiting in your room until the dinner party begins? Uh, alright. That's fine, we'll do as you ask. I apologize, we weren't trying to cause any trouble. Hmm. Fine then, just don't let it happen again. Uh, safe return to you. <laughs> I apologize that you were subjected to such dreadful behavior. My name is Hilda. I am the headmaid of Cranstall Castle and I oversee all of the housekeeping duties. <laughs> we had a feeling. Huh? Forgive my rudeness, but uh, are we previously acquainted? Well, uh, someone told us about you. And the Julius letter to Hilda. I know this handwriting. You see? We also have our bracelet emblems and identification with us. I see. Please come with me to the maid's sitting room. We can discuss the matter further once we are there. I understand. You need to deliver Professor Russell's message to Her Majesty, correct? Right. If now's not a good time, we can try later, but... No, it's not an issue. But those special ops men have had the royal keep under constant surveillance for some time now. Well, couldn't you just go and hand it over yourself? Like, uh, is that uh, too difficult of a task? Only the Duke, the Colonel and hired attendants such as myself are allowed in. Which means that a private audience is probably a no-go. What do you think, Estelle? We could ask Hilda to relay the Professor's message to Her Majesty. Mm, no, I'd really rather speak to her face to face. There are just too many particulars we don't know that we'd really need to discuss directly. Like what Duke Dunan and Colonel Richard are after. Estelle and Joshua, I have a bit of an idea. Could I get you to return here and once the dinner party is over? Why? Have you thought of a way for us to see Her Majesty? <laughs> dress up as maids. Watch it be dress up as maids. 100%. Like I'm placing all my chips there. It's gotta be m maid cross dressing for Joshua. A hundred percent. I believe I have. It may be difficult, but I think it's worth a try. I'm going to need some time to get ready, so can you come back after the dinner party? Awesome! Understood. We'll be back then. I'll be waiting. Food prep is done, so I think we'll begin serving shortly. For now, it's probably best if you wait in your room. Okay, bye, Hilda. Yo, Zin, dinner's ready. Hell yeah! It's, this is probably what's gonna happen, like, watch. Hey guys, talk about being late. The party's about to start, you know? Sorry. We got so caught up in sightseeing that we lost track of time. Plus, we also talked to, to all of the mayors. Huh. Well, aren't we well connected? We're close friends with the mayor of Roland. Plus, we've met the other mayors in the course of our travels. Ah, I see. I guess your work as embracers has caused you to meet quite a few big shots. You two sure get around for junior bracers. <laughs> yeah, you might say that. Have you done any bracer assignments since we came to Gransel? I guess it's not all that different in other countries, right? Right. For a full-fledged bracer, nationality isn't an issue when it comes to your work. The prelim fights and legal procedures at the embassy kept me too busy to get any actual work done, though. But hey, there are four other bracers on duty too, which isn't too bad. Normally, that would be enough to handle most cases, I'd imagine. 
but with all of them concentrated in Grand Soul, that must make it tough to handle any cases in other regions. <laughs> yeah, could be. Uh, I feel like a goose just walked over my grave. Ah, uh, what is that supposed to mean? I wonder what's going on with Shara back in Roland. I actually wonder that too. No, that name rings a bell. You wouldn't happen to be talking about Sherazard, would you? You know her? She's our mentor, and she's been a close friend for ages. Oh, okay, makes sense. I met her a long time ago when a case brought her to Calvard. She was fortunate to have a good master working with her from such a young age. Bruh, everybody knows Cassius, what the hell? <laughs> her master? Yeah, probably dad. Please, pardon me. The table for the dinner party has been set. May I show you the way? Yes, show, show me the way. Sure. I was getting bored with waiting anyhow. Alright. Wanna go eat fancy? Sure. That fight left me starving. Let's go dig in. Uh, come on, you two. It would be nice if you two didn't completely forget your table manners for once. <laughs> My man Joshua still, like, worried about the bracer's image. Um, this is a dinner party, right? What's with all the empty plates, then? Well, just wait a second and then the maids will come and, <laughs> and get you food. Plenty of knives and forks, though. That's because it's a formal dinner. Everything comes out in a specific order, starting with hors d'oeuvre. Then you use the knives and forks from the outside in. And that's all part of having good table manners? And here comes the anxiety attack, yep, been waiting for it. <laughs> it's really not so bad. It does mean that you get to have some of the finest food available. Manners and etiquette are secondary. Indeed, indeed. I'm told that you're acquainted with everyone who will be attending. No need to get stressed out. Yeah, I guess that's true. Please don't encourage her. She'll literally start eating with her with her hands. Please. On that note, is the gentleman accompanying you going to be okay with a knife and fork? I'm told that folks from the East usually eat with chopsticks. You've done your research. However, I'm a firm believer in the when in liberal, do as the liberalians do policy. I'm not specially skilled with them, but I will use a knife and fork. My, how elegantly handled. I'm impressed. You're as much a gentleman as you are a martial arts champion. Ooh, are some sparks flying between Zin and Maybell? <laughs> you flatter me. Boy, he really is a complete sucker for a pretty face. I think he's being more polite than a latch, though. Anyway, his grace is really late. I wonder what he's up to. Hmm, indeed. So, if the seat at the head of the table is for the Duke, then who might that other one be for? Indeed. Perhaps it is intended for Princess Claudia. Your attention, ladies and gentlemen. My humblest apologies for the long delay. Presenting His Grace, the Duke. Well then, I must apologize for making you wait so... I'm afraid that I was in a meeting from which I simply could not break away. This gentleman is Colonel Richard, commanding officer of the Royal Intelligence Division. I've invited him here to thank him for his tireless efforts in helping to deal with the terrorist situation. It's a pleasure to meet you all. I was quite gratified to be invited to this occasion by our Honorable Duke. I ask that you pardon my uncouth soldier's uniform and allow me to sit with you. Ah. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Estelle being like, like the dog. This is fine. You've got to be kidding. We're having dinner with him. I suspected this might happen, but it's still unnerving. Ooh, okay. What's that in the plate? <laughs> excellent, excellent. What say you, Mayor Maybell? What do you think of Gransel Castle's master chef? Is his cooking not on par with that found in Bosis Antero's restaurant? Yes, it's quite remarkable. The wine selection also perfectly complements the meal. I almost want to try hiring him away. <laughs> you are not the first to say such things. And what of you, Zin, wasn't it? Is the food to your liking? Oh, it's excellent. I don't have the words to describe the sense of refinement and depth. I certainly believe I could develop a real taste for Le Berlian cuisine, though. Good, good, I'm glad to hear it. And you, young braces? I imagine you've never experienced such fine food in your life before. It's extremely delicious. Far more worthy of being associated with the royal family than the person who invited us. <laughs> Damn, Estelle, you're gonna get thrown out. <laughs> Indeed, it is a genuine treat. Hmm? Huh? It's certainly delicious food. And we couldn't miss a chance to attend so prestigious an event as this. Thank you very much for your gracious invitation. <laughs> very kind of you to say so. I do finally remember what my butler has been telling me about. We met before during the ruin incident. Perhaps our fates are linked in some bizarre fashion. Yes, sir, maybe so. So he'd forgotten all about us until his butler reminded him. Come, let us put social classes and ranks aside for the evening. Food is abundant and the wine flows freely, so enjoy to your heart's content. Your Grace, if we could, I'd like to do as we discussed first. Ah, yes, that's a fine idea. Actually, I have something important to say to you fine folk who represent the kingdom. I use this celebration as the place to make an important announcement. An announcement? And what might that be? Hmm... I believe I will allow Colonel Richard to explain in detail. Thank you. It's a coup d'etat. There's no other words for it, really. As you are, no doubt, already aware, Her Majesty has been in poor health as of late. However, she has been recovering and may grace us with a public appearance soon. Ah, that's excellent news. Can we possibly go and check in on her? Unfortunately, she does not consider that to be a wise decision at the moment. Within a few days, it seems likely that the terrorists plaguing the kingdom will be swept away. In light of that, the Queen's birthday celebrations will be held as originally planned. Um, well... Citizens, the citizens are, will surely be happy to hear this news, as they have been looking forward to it. But surely that is not all you wish to tell us. Right. If that were all, you could have just sent a long message. <laughs> Indeed, you are correct. Her Majesty is continuing to recover, as was previously stated. However, given the gravity of her condition, she has also issued a proclamation. Due to her tenuous health, she has stated that she wishes to abdicate the throne and turn over royal authority to her nephew, Duke Dunan. What? Is this true? Nah, we're trolling. Joshua, this is... Yeah, the conspiracy finally makes its appearance. I was surprised when Her Majesty first broached the subject as well, but her illness has left her quite frail. But it is all natural. She has ruled the kingdom for 40 years, leading it through times of strife and war, all without a husband, might I add. 
Given that, I wish to relieve her of the stress of her duties following the festival's successful conclusion. As the heir to the throne, the decisions are mine to make. How terrible. Is Her Majesty's condition truly that severe? I'm ashamed that I've never noticed any signs. In any of my annual visits... I isn't this far too serious a matter to discuss at what is supposedly a casual dinner with guests who are not, like, into this type of stuff? I mean, I mean, you're putting bracers, like, low-level bracers in the same spot as the mayors and the most influential people. Doesn't that seem kind of weird? <laughs> Pardon my rudeness, but this all seems to stretch credulity. <laughs> Mayor Maybell, are you saying that you cannot take his grace at his word? N no, nothing of the sort. I simply mean that, as an elected official, I don't understand why the successor to the throne can't be elected in the same fashion. And also why it's not someone... of the main bloodline? That's true. If possible, I'd like to hear this directly from Her Majesty. Um, your unease is quite understandable. But we do ask that you try to maintain your composure and allow us to continue. As mentioned earlier, I believe Her Majesty will give a formal announcement herself during the festival. Could you be persuaded to shelve your doubts until then? Well... The issue is basically this. Once this becomes common knowledge, we cannot know how citizens will react. This is why we're telling the leaders first, to help stave off any chaos or public disorder before it happens. This was also the decision of His Grace. Uh -huh. Well, yes, uh, this is true. Also, the Queen's abdication of the throne will have international repercussions. The other nations on the continent will have their eyes on us, and we must be watchful for any action on the part of the Erebonians. <laughs> Man, having... having Olivia here would have been fun now. <laughs> Surely. You can see why it is necessary to show unified support for the new king. This is the world in which we are going to be living. He makes it all sound so rational. Yeah, he's quite the master manipulator. I hear he's also a master baiter. <laughs> he must have been at the guild. In other words, the official decree will be given during the birthday celebrations. But you thought it would be best to inform us first, so that we can be prepared for any issues that may arise, correct? <laughs> I'm glad to see that we have an understanding. Hmm... If this all comes to pass, we're going to find ourselves quite busy. Yes, and we'll have to announce it to the citizens. I have a question. I believe that the Duke has a fair claim to the throne. However, is there not another who also has the same right of su succession? Uh, whoa, whoa. No doubt you're referring to Her Majesty's granddaughter, Princess Claudia. It is true that she and His Grace have an equal claim to the throne. But it would appear that Her Majesty did not choose her due to her tender age. And I must say, I agree with her wisdom in this matter. I should hardly like to impose such responsibility upon a girl so young. Yes, yes, absolutely. For the time being, I believe it would be best for Claudia to find a fine marriage prospect. Though it is strictly formal, informal, sorry, there is already interest from the royal families of a number of other nations. Perhaps a royal wedding could take place as soon as this year. Oh my. Hmm, I understand. If that happens, then we'll have two major events to celebrate. Hmm, I honestly think she's a bit young for marriage. Excuse me, may I ask a question? Sin! Huh? I don't mind, speak freely. Sorry to seem rude, but this doesn't sound like the kind of conversation you'd want outsiders hearing. Particularly a foreigner. 
So, how come you're making this announcement now? That is solely because of the serendipitous turn of events that allowed Bracers to win the championship. We had wanted to inform the guild of this in advance as well, oh yeah, sure. I've already discussed the idea with Her Majesty. Gotcha. I guess Liberals' military embracers are on just as good of terms as the stories say. <laughs> that is because we lack the military strength of the Empire or the Republic. <laughs> what do you mean, otherwise you would have crushed us? The harsh reality is that keeping close relations with each other is a must. In any event, do you now understand our intentions? Mm, yeah, alright. We'll pass on what we've learned here to the guild then. Man, I've heard some pretty unbelievable conversation in my time, but that was something else. I mean, I'm a foreigner and after all, so it's not that big of a deal for me. I bet that was huge news for you guys though. Uh, of course it was. I can't believe things have gone this far already. Huh? Er, uh, never mind. But really, what a shame. That food was so amazing, and it practically melted in the mouth. Couldn't tell what the last flavor was, though. <laughs> Understandable enough, it was poison. But anyway, did you want to go for a walk to work off some of the rich food, Estelle? <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I could go for a little bit of fresh air. Ugh, you just played tourist a little while ago, and now you want to take an after-dinner walk? I sure don't get it, must be a local thing. <laughs> I think you're exaggerating a little bit. You haven't gone out to take in the sights? There is a lot of historic architecture around here, you know? If the mood hits me, I may still give it a shot. On the other hand, the kitchen may still have some food left over. You've gotta be kidding, you're still hungry? If you had a blade to my throat, my dying wish would be for some liquor and a snack. I might go and hunt up a bar or something in a little bit. Fair enough, my man. I understand, I completely understand. Still, we have a mission and uh... Oh yeah, we have to get to Hilda now. Eh, <sighs> things have gotten serious. We really have to find a way to get in to see Her Majesty. First things first, we go talk to the headmaid, Hilda, like we promised. She probably knows a way for us to speak directly to the Queen. Fine by me. Oh yeah, it is fine by you. I'm pretty sure it won't be fine by Joshua. Once again, I already called it. I'm gonna say it again. Maid costume. Oh, it's you. What? Of course. Colonel Richard. <laughs> Estelle and Joshua. This is our first opportunity to truly speak face to face, I believe. The last time we saw one another was right after Mayor Dalmore was arrested, wasn't it? I'm honestly surprised that you remember us. I realized that we exchanged a few words, but you made quite an impression on me. My curiosity was piqued, so I did a bit of checking up on you. I was quite surprised to learn that you were the children of Cassius. How'd you find that out? You have the same last name. <laughs> Please understand, I'm not trying to show off the Intelligence Division's capabilities. I am greatly indebted to him from our time together in the army. Indeed. More than words can properly express. Might I persuade you to stay a while and talk? I've been hoping to speak with you two for quite some time now. Huh? Pardon me, Colonel, but don't you have a meeting with His Grace? I don't mind being a bit late. <laughs> what is she gonna do? Complain? <laughs> like, like I'm gonna take the cuffs off. <laughs> As if. Ah, yes. If we're going to talk, why don't we use the lounge inside? I'll mix you up a couple of virgin cocktails. Uh, I'll prepare them, sir. No, that won't be necessary. I want you to go to His Grace and inform him that I'll be delayed. 
Yes, sir. <sighs> oh. Pardon me, then. Now then, shall we retire to the lounge? Please, follow me. Ah, uh, Joshua, what should we do? I don't see where we have much choice but to follow him. We'll be a little late, but we can talk to the headmate later. I mean, if he's supposed to be... Well, he's supposed to be meeting with the Duke, right? Not the Queen. Okay. I met Cassius shortly after I graduated from the military academy. I was assigned to a mobile unit that was under his command. And since that time, I have found myself in his debt again and again, both personally and professionally. Uh, he did? And uh, what did you think of him at the time? To put it simply, he was a hero. And a master swordsman to boot. No matter the scenario, he could find a way to handle any number of battlefronts in every direction. It wasn't just a matter of sheer tactics. He understood and could direct high-level strategy as well. Quite simply, he was a man without peer. If I didn't know better, I'd say we were talking about two different people. <laughs> so you were with our father during the Hundred Days War? Yes, he was my CO. Even now, I can still vividly remember the excitement that filled me as we executed his plan that turned the war's tide. Anytime I get to talking about those days, time just runs away with me. But this much I can tell you. If Cassius Bright had not been part of the Royal Army, Liber would now be part of the Erebonian Empire. And no way! That's kinda hard to believe. <laughs> well, as a hero, he had a knack for doing unbelievable things. He left the army immediately after the war, declining even a medal from the Queen. So few know of his achievements. I don't know, dude, like, so few of the basic populace? Maybe. But like, anyone who's the least bit important in this region, they know him, alright. But inside the army, many soldiers still hold him up as the prime example of what a hero should be. Ah, uh, he never said a one word about this to me. Well, it's not really the kind of thing you would tell your daughter about. It's not fair to criticize him for that. Hey, whose side are you on? And besides, why doesn't any of this shock you like it shocks me? Oh, because I already knew. Did you already know about all this or something? No. Well, I didn't know that he was Colonel Richard's superior officer. The rest I knew about, vaguely. Vaguely? You're an accomplice? Hey, calm down. It's not like he told me any of it. I just figured a lot of it out. He told me he didn't feel it was something worth going out of his way to tell others about. Urgh, I just don't get it. When he comes back, he's so in trouble. <laughs> uh, I... Please excuse us, we didn't mean to interrupt. No, no. Seeing you like this is actually a bit of a relief. When I found out that your father was intending to leave the military, I desperately tried to stop him. But it seems that by leaving, he did what was best for himself after all. After losing his dear wife, maybe being with you was all that could help him recover. Colonel Richard! Now then, I thank you for taking the time to come here. Yeah, about that. Still waiting for those, um, cocktails. Just saying. I really can't keep the Duke waiting, so I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. Oh, alright. Our apologies for making you so late. Not at all. You both have told me the one thing I wanted most to know. And thus, I have no regrets. Huh? How's that again? <laughs> I'm sure we'll have a chance to speak again soon. Cassius might even be with us then, to share in the stories. Okay, that's not ominous at all. 
cool. Um, okay, who was that man? And what has he done with Colonel Richard? What are you babbling about now? It's just that it's weird to hear him talking about that that way. I wasn't expecting him to be so, well, nice. True, he doesn't seem all that villainous anyway. Even so, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion that he's got something up in his sleeve. For now, we should probably put the issue of that aside. Yeah, I guess you're right. And I hate to say it, but I think that he might have been playing nice just because he could get something out of it. He's an intelligence officer, so he probably thinks that fooling a couple of kids is as easy as could be. D don't you think that's taking it a little that's going a little too far? You might be right. Let me be the one who's mistrustful of others. You should just follow your instincts and believe whatever you think is right. Huh? But just make sure you're prepared for anything. Don't let your guard down. I'd say a bracer's job is pretty much that, in fact. Okay, got it. I'll keep it in mind. Thank you, Estelle. Thank you? What the heck are you thanking me for? Anyway, we need to go back and see Hilda. She's probably sick of waiting for us. Yeah, she should be in the maid quarters. And we shall head there pronto, but in the next episode. So, thank you everybody for having followed me thus far. I have been Loaf Dog, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye!